like there is, I, you know, any time. I mean, it, it goes back to the Samuel Soul trials for witches in Salem and stuff like that. It, abnormal behavior. People are very mainstream strong these days. And I remember being really scared for my brother and not understanding it. For me to see someone having a seizure is very scary. I think in educating people, we've always got to start with where people are. And where people are right now is that they don't understand very much at all about epilepsy. They are frightened by the uh, possibility of uh, themselves or people they love or being in the proximity of somebody who loses control of their body. And that fear of losing control of your body, I think, is a, a very primary and uh, fear. Uh, that everyone has. Uh, the notion of our autonomous control over our own body is uh, pretty basic and, and is uh, reinforced from early childhood in which children are taught from a very early age to control their bodies and to manage their temper and to manage their emotions and to uh, hold a spoon properly and hold a fork properly and to you know look both ways as they cross the street and to you know run in a particular way and as they train in sports or train in dance or train in music. So the notion that somebody will be afraid, can, the notion somebody can lose control of their body generates, I think, a, a very deep fear and anxiety in people. Culturally, you know, Cambodian are Buddhist and if, if kids having something like this, they think that, that uh, they've done something wrong in the past life. That's why this life, they they deserve this and so um, instead of helping the kids or loving the kids they ostracize them because they feel embarrassed because I'm scared for that yeah, person I don't know what's gonna happen to them and I don't know how they're, sure they're feeling okay. yeah. I suppose it might create fear in somebody who had never seen it before probably most people in the world have either directly or indirectly been touched by cancer, for example. Cancer is a very, very well-known problem, uh, health problem in our country. That's not the case with epilepsy. That's why I, I say I don't think it's a, a disease that's at the forefront of the thinking of the American public or, for that matter, a, a particular health priority in, in this country or even around the world. Um, now, whether or not it is a stigma depends upon how people react to seizures. Seizures are a very frightening thing for most people to witness and heaven knows I'm sure to go through. I have not ever had a seizure so I can't speak to that but I have witnessed plenty and they can be very frightening. So in that respect um, I'm sure that there is a, a, a stigma about epilepsy um, which mostly grows out of the fact that people don't really understand the disease or, or, or what it's all about. I've seen people have seizures and stuff, so, so I know what it looks like. I watched the cat have a seizure once. It was pretty impressive, and it reminded me of uh, Reagan McNeil from The Exorcist, and then I sort of realized, oh, yeah, that's where that comes from. You know, if somebody has a severe enough um, seizure, it definitely looks like they're levitating and, you know, bouncing off the floor or whatever. So I suppose it could scare people. My little brother used to have seizures when he was little. I would define them as, like, random attacks in the brain. I have difficulty describing it in medical terms that would be simple for the public to understand. For me, it's like having your brain go to war with itself. The warfare between the neurons in your brain can go anywhere from very mild, almost like a Cold War type event, all the way into a full, fully involved warfare. I think the seizures are sort of like your brain's having a firefight 